Hey, good morning, responders. Uh, th this is this month's version of the Chemical of the Month. So if you would, get your charts, get your NIOSH book out, and we'll get started. Uh, remember, this is all about trying to practice using the system, because if you don't use the system, I guarantee you're going to forget how it works. OK, so now we have our charts. We have our NIOSH. Uh, here's the chemical of the month for this month. The name of the chemical is methyl 2 methyl 2 propanate methyl 2 methyl 2 propanate so if you go to your chart go to chart number two look at the alphabetical periodic chart and just look for the word methyl remember it's a yes or no simple answer uh, so we look for methyl there the answer is no so we start with the above the line SOP and remember what that means that means it's a gas the gas is heavier than air it's got the following hazards it's toxic it's flammable, it's corrosive, it polymerizes, and it's radioactive until proven otherwise. And based on those hazards, I'm already thinking. I'm thinking I need to wear turnout gear, most likely. I'm uh, probably going to. I'm going to bring my safe kit. I'm going to bring the PID, FID. I'll bring my halogen, my freon meter, my pH paper, uh, my F paper, and the rad meter. And since it's flammable, we're turnout gear and FCBA. Okay, so the next thing we do, the name of the chemical, remember, is methyl methyl propanate. And remember how the system works. When we get numbers, we throw those numbers out. So when you go to chart now, the above the line family chart, you start in the flammable box and you see methyl. Then you see methyl again. And then you go down to a family that ends in ATE. Okay, I'll give you a second to find that. Right, it's a red 10. Now remember what the third syllable was, right? And Joe said methyl, methyl, the third syllable, acryl. That tells you that methyl and methyl has carbon and hydrogen, so it burns. The acryl tells you, you can see the P next to it. Look at the legend in the bottom of uh, the char box. P equals polymerize. Yeah, so this and, is a and red what Chris did, Chris kind of got ahead of that. He knows the synonym and trade name of this, but you guys didn't know that. So what you would have to do is you'd have to go to NIOSH and go to the back of your book because it's not in the main section of your NIOSH. You'd go back to page 409. And when you go to page 409, you'll see methyl 2, methyl 2, 2 propanate. And that'll take you to page 214 in your NIOSH. So everybody go to page 214 in your NIOSH. It's in the bottom, 214. And when you're on 214, that's where Chris came up with methyl, methyl acrylate. So, because he, that's very important that you don't forget about the acryl, ACR. Now, what does that mean to you? Chris, what's that mean to you, ACR? That means it polymerizes because then how are we going to verify polymerizes? We look in the formula and we see a double bond. We see the equal sign. We see the P after the 129, which is the ERG response guide that tells you it polymerizes. Next to the P, you see in parentheses, inhibited. Another chemical, in case of this chemical, methyl methacrylate, hydroquinone. Another chemical put in methyl methacrylate so it doesn't polymerize. And then when you go down to the note, we're in, under incompatibility to reactivity. It tells you that it polymerizes, and you'll see under note, it may polymerize when subject to heat, oxidizer, or ultraviolet light. Which and, means, Chris, it's not always going to polymerize. No, it's so not. So they add that chemical to it, so this truck, you know, when it's shipment, it doesn't blow up. So well, what's it telling me? It's telling me polymerization, by the way, looks exactly like a blevy. Only a blevy is from external. This is the double bond. The equal sign will start breaking apart. You can't stop it. You can't put 500 GPN per impingement like a blevy. And then well, how are you going to know that? If pressure increases and something's polymerized, class, what would you do? What instrument would you use? You can't use anything other than a temp gun. So here's the temp gun. So if, if Chris is talking about that container, and I take the temp gun, and it goes from 120, 140, 160, 180, obviously in our class, that's a red light. You don't have the PPE to protect yourself from that, so we back out, evacuate, and wait for it to either cool down or blow up, one of the two. Okay, so now we're in step two of the charts. Step two is when we open up the NIOSH, we predicted the hazards in the above the line size up. And what we do with that now is we verify that all those hazards in the NIOSH. So the first thing we said in the size up, it was a gas. If you look at, chemo if you look at the physical description box, you notice what it says. It says a colorless liquid. So we have to tweak that. Our initial size up said gas, book says liquid, so we tweak it. No big deal. 
Hot zone goes from 300 feet to 150 feet. Next thing we said, we said it had a vapor pressure. Look at the vapor pressure. This has a vapor pressure of 29. Remember, water has a vapor pressure of about 18. So this evaporates or puts more vapors in the air than water. And why is vapor pressure important? What do we breathe in? We breathe in vapors. What burn? Vapors. So this does have a vapor pressure. And if you look, if you, if you go to the back of the charts and see the rule 1300, if you, if you multiply 1300 times the vapor of the liquid, which is 29 millimeters of mercury, you'll see that the vapor pressure, the amount of vapors in the air are up to 38,000 parts per million. So, so the, what we look at is, Chris, where are those vapors going, right? That's, that's important to us. We've got to know if they're going up or they're going down. So there's a chemical physical property that we always look at to see if it's heavier, lighter than air, and it's MW. And if you can remember back from your class, MW of air is 29. The molecular weight of air is 29. This weighs 100. So this is heavier than air. So, and here's a hint. Every liquid on the planet, the molecular weight is greater than air. So if you went to an unknown liquid, those vapors are heavier than air. Good. And so the next hazard we're going to verify now is toxicity. We say every chemical is toxic. When we go to the book, what we're able to do is we're able to determine how toxic it is. So we go up to the upper right corner, we look at IDLH, and the IDLH of methyl methacrylate is 1,000 parts per million. Remember what IDLH is, inhalation, inhalation. So if I put my SEBA mask on, I'm good to go for that toxicity. And remember, value. when we take the vapor pressure again, because this is an inhalation hazard, vapor pressure of 1,300 times, times 29 millimeters of mercury, you're looking at 38,000 parts per million. This is a colorless liquid. The vapor that's putting out is invisible. You're not going to see this. So you need an instrument that can measure Perfect. the level of toxicity in the air. How much is in the air? Can I, can, I, can I doff my, my SCBA? Is this flammable? Is it toxic? Can I release it back to the public? Do I need to evacuate? Remember, the 150 feet initial hot zone is before meters get there. As soon as meter gets you, that's going to drive your hot zone to reduction or increase based on the amount and based on the temperature and the amount that's released into the air. So Chris said we needed an instrument to measure the amount of vapors in the air. That would be our PID, our photoionization detector. It's in, on the multi-ray here, it it's puts VOC. It calls that sensor the VOC. But do these sensors always work? Does a PID, is it able to see all chemicals? No. So what you have to do is you have to look at what property? Chris? Ionizing potential. The go book down calls to the middle. IP. Of, go down to the property. It says IP. If you put, if you flip IP, it's PI. So a PID is used for a IP only if the IP in the book is less than one in the meter. How much is the one in your meter? Ten point six in here. The IP in the book of methyl methacrylate is nine point seven. So the PID would work to measure the toxins in the air. Excellent. So the next hazard we predicted, we predicted it was flammable. So when we look at the chemical physical properties in your NIOSH, where are we looking? To find out if it's flammable, we look at LEL and UEL. And are there numbers there? I see a 1.7% to 8.2%. So yes, it's flammable. But since it's a liquid, there's another property we have to look at to determine if it's flammable today. Flashpoint. And we remember what flashpoint, keep it easy. It's the temperature that the liquid needs to be to be flammable. So okay. what's the flashpoint when you look on page 214 for methyl methacrylate? The flashpoint is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Forget about the OC in parentheses. That just means open cup. CC would be closed cup. That's only going to vary one crap. or two. Yeah, that's college. So 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So you, now you take the temperature of the spill, not the air, the temperature of the spill. Okay, the spill is 75 degrees. So is the flash point less than the spill temperature? If the answer is yes, what is it, Joe? Flammable today. Right. So we have a toxic, we have a flammable today. Now we want to know if it's corrosive. So what you can do is you can go back to chart, so you can go back to your above the line family chart and look under the pH column. No X in the pH column for red 10. It's not corrosive. But do we still, when we make entry, do we still put our mask on with the pH paper and the fluorine paper? Yes, we do, just like that. But we're not expecting a change 
based on the, uh, that family. So when you go to chart three on red 10P and there is no X, there's not a blue X, there's not a red X, there's not a yellow X, that's telling you that it's not corrosive. If you dip the pH paper and you get a color change or a color change on the mask, it ain't methyl methacryl. Right. You did the right research for the wrong chemical. It could be maybe methanoic acid something I tell, acrylic acid, but it's not the chemical. So bring the meters, even if there's not an X or them, because if you get a hit on a meter that you're not supposed to, it's not the chemical that they, that you, that they told you when you ran on. So Chris, Chris talked about fluorine. He said that there was no yellow X under the fluorine column. So if you look at your chemical formula of methyl methacrylate, and you, all you have to do is look for the letter F. The letter F is not there, so there's no fluorine in it. So. Not corrosive, no fluorine, still bring the meters. Next hazard we're looking for is reactivity. Well, the first thing we look for, Chris covered it already, we look for polymerization. And this chemical can polymerize. And if it does polymerize, the outside, the sign would be that the temperature is increasing. We'll next look down to incompatibilities and reactivities, and let's see if it's more than just polymerizes. Does it react with air and water? And uh, I don't see water and air. Do you, Chris? Nope. I just see incompatibility with nitrates, oxidizers, peroxides, alkalides, and moisture. Yeah, remember about that oxidizers, right? That is incompatible with the substance. It doesn't mean that's the hazard of the substance. It's allergic to those chemicals. So it's not that chemical. So with an oxidizer, anytime you see a chemical that burns, that's, that's flammable, it's going to say it's incompatible with oxidizers because it'll burn better, hotter. It'll burn easier. The LELU yellow change. So that's why it's always going to say oxidizer for incompatibilities and reactivities. The next thing we look for, here's where we're going to we'll sump you guys. We're going to talk about radioactivity. Is this chemical radioactive? You remember that? Yeah, right. If you, if you, uh, that's going to be the DOT guide number 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, and 166. So I go to the NIOSH guide, I go under the formula, I see DOT, the four digit UN number is 1247. We're not looking at that, we're looking at the guide number. The next guide is 129. That's, is that 161 through 166? No. Negative, not radioactive. Okay, so what are we doing here? So now we sized up. We verified our hazards, so the hazards of methyl methacrylate is toxic through inhalation, flammable, flammable today, it polymerizes, but it should have an inhibitor in there, so we're not expecting it to be polymerizing, but still, we've got to be prepared for it. And so part of what this whole size up versus verify uh, research tells me is the hazards which drive the meters, which drives the PPE. So we have all kinds of PPE in our wardrobe over here. Who wants to wear plastic on a flammable liquid? So flammable liquids and, and plastics don't go. So turnout gear is the best level of PPE. And since it's toxic through inhalation, we should put our SCBA mask on and be breathing air there. Okay, so let's run a call now. So we've done step two. Now is step three. We've arrived on the scene. We know the hazards. We know the meters. We know the PPE. What do we do now? Well, we enter the hot zone with our meters. And Chris, me and you are going downrange into the hot zone. When we get to the hot zone, our rad meter is background telling me what? Let's take a micro hours per hour. And it's bad, so there's no radiation there. pH paper on my mask, no F change. paper on my mask, no, no change. change. Uh, the temp gun is now 84.7. It was 75 earlier, now it's 84. So is it polymerizing or is the sun heating it up? How are we going to know that? We're going to sit there and not move and just keep the temp gun on the container. And if the temperature increases while well, I'm not moving any closer to the container, there's a pressure game being inside. Could be from polymerization. Okay, so here's, a, here's your temperature, Chris. 84, 84, 84, 84, 84, 84, 84, 84. Green light. So it's not polymerizing. It has the potential, but it's not. Then I take my four gas. My four gas gives me 2% of the LEL. Interpret that for me. That's flammable. Is it leaking? Yes. Are there vapors coming off of yes, it? Yes, there are. I take my vapor meter called the PID. I look at the PID. It says 340 parts per million. So that, what does that tell me? The vapors are in the air. If I don't have my mask on or there are civilians around, they could be breathing in these toxic vapors. So we evacuate the civilians and anybody working in that environment got to have their mask on. Next, we go to our FID. The flame ionizing detector. Chris, when does an FID work? When the formula has carbon and hydrogen. And if you go back to your NIOSH and you look at methyl methacrylate, there's all kinds of carbons and hydrogens in there. So would it work? Yes, it yes, will Yes, it will. So 
We'll have FID readings roughly the same, pretty close to the same as what the PID would be, somewhere around uh, 340 parts per million, same thing. Uh, we take a Freon meter. Would the Freon meter work on this one? Look at chart number one. Look at column seven, which is what starts with element number nine, which is fluorine. And you'll see fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. For your Freon meter to work, those elements have to be in the formula. Look at the formula. It's C, it's O, and it's H. That's not a Freon. So the meter will not hit. So you won't expect it to be going tick, 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 tick. No, no increased tick rate. And, so, just, and just as a footnote, the Freon meter is not intrinsically safe. So when you, if you don't get a hit by 1% of the LEL, turn it off. Yeah. It's not halogenated. It's not a Freon. So now that we walk up to the drum, we've got the drum uh, leaking. We can easily repair the leak, all right, with, with what PPE, turnout gear, SCBA. Once we get the, the drum patched, clean up the spill. Now we have to monitor the air to make sure it's safe to reoccupy. So we'll, we'll do that last. That's kind of our last step. Turn it back over to the, the occupant. Let the folks go in the methyl methacrylate plant go back to work. So don't forget, guys, if you don't practice using the charts and the system guaranteed when you need it, you won't be able to use the charts. So again, practice, practice, practice. We do these chemicals once a, once a month so you guys can practice. Well, for, for now, Joe signing off. Chris. And Chris, we're signing off. Stay safe. Peace out.